Hey guys, excited to have Brandon Turner on with us now, and he's going to be talking about whether we're divided or dividing each other, which is just, I believe, going to be an incredible, incredible talk. Um, he's an IT guy turned entrepreneur. His main gig is giving time back to people, owners, managers, and teams. And um, as a person who really works at uniting teams uh, recently through his work, he's, he's been working a lot on how we can stay united as communities and, you know, all get on the same page. So I think that's that's going to be really cool to hear um, his perspective in this talk. And, um, you know, it's especially just, you know, as we've talked about throughout the summit, how divided our country and policies and people and the polarities that are happening and how we can kind of all come back to communicating with each other and, 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 and solve some of these problems. So I'm really excited to get his perspective here. And uh, Brandon, I'll let you take it away. So good to have you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for having me. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here uh, amongst all these great people, all these great viewers. Um, this is a really awesome opportunity and I think it's great for all of us. So uh, thank you so much, Tim, and your team for putting this together. Um, again, my name is Brandon Turner. I am an IT guy turned entrepreneur, as Tim said. I uh, moved to, I live in the state of Oklahoma now with my wife and son. I moved here from Georgia about 12 years ago. And I have a company called Procedure Sheets. And essentially, in basic terms, we help people create jobs and build scalable businesses and get their time back. And there are several different ways that we get that started, but one, what we start with is we offer a subscription service uh, called Get SOPs, where we document what you do in your business so that you can delegate the work to other people or keep your team on the same page or both. And the title of my talk today is, Are We Divided or Dividing Each Other? This is actually, a, this is actually an area that's um, a, a topic that's very, um, that's that's very close to me because it, it's become apparent how divided we've become and actually have always been, especially in 2020. On New Year's Eve of 2019, none of us could have predicted the events of 2020. And it's been quite a way to start a new decade. I think most of us would agree. Uh, as you all know, uh, COVID-19, race relations, politics, have stirred up intense division among people this year. This division has always been there, but it's been magnified and augmented now. News, both good and bad, travels faster than it used to. Stories that were once silenced are being heard now. And emotions we used to carry deep inside are being brought to the surface. We've all been rocked by this year as it has brought on fears, anxieties, and challenges that many feel ill-equipped to handle. This is not the first time that we've dealt with change. I do believe our division from each other is preventing us from making the best of it. So I'd like to share a little tale. It's, it's like a tale of two cities, but what it really is is a tale of two generations. The story goes that Colonel Harlan Sanders, the founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken, did not start his business until he was in his mid-60s. How defiant, don't you think? The idea that someone who should be thinking about retirement instead chooses to start a business, that's not normal. But then on the other end of the spectrum, excuse me, we have these millennials breaking tradition and going about life in ways that are also not normal. But is normal really a good thing? Is normal what was or is best for you? Considering the massive rift between baby boomers and millennials these days, and my personally being born into the generation between them, we lose sight of how much these two groups can share. Each generation holds wisdom and knowledge that can benefit and open the hearts and minds of the other. Each generation grew up in entirely different worlds. 
run at a different pace than the other, has different opportunities than the other, has different challenges than the other. The one thing each and every generation has in common, however, is that we are all human beings, a species designed for adaptation and evolution. A world where many of us struggle seeing past the color of someone's skin or the political views on which they stand. This reminder that we are truly one race is prevalent in both our differences and our similarities. So think about the challenges baby boomers are facing and have faced for years. For over 20 years, since the dawn of the internet age and manufacturing going overseas, they have been asked to start over in a world that has left them behind. This is a world where their skills are obsolete and their pensions are gone and their social security is becoming non-existent. This was a world where baby boomers could graduate school and find a safe, secure job with a good company and stay with them for decades. They could then retire with a pension, social security, and maybe a savings and enjoy the rest of their lives after age 65 or so. These people were indispensable to their employers. The idea of switching careers or starting a business were almost as unthinkable as being laid off. Well then, in the 1990s, the internet age, also known as the information age, started. And after that happened, some of our parents went from having typewriters to computers in their houses. They went from having phones attached to their walls to phones attached to their cars, to phones they could carry in their pockets. The public library had computers with internet access now. People booked travel online instead of with a face-to-face -face agent. People in one country could communicate with people in another country without traveling. And the jobs that people used to do on our very own soil went overseas. Now, let's say you're a millennial. You grew up in this age, this age of information. What you can look up on your phone, baby boomers had to go to the public library and check out a book for. What your kids call a hashtag, they called a pound sign. Not only do you have access to knowledge, entertainment, and people that baby boomers could never dream of, but it's all at your fingertips. None of these changes that affected baby boomers affected you the same way because they were your normal. The world you grew up in didn't have a world war with factories making weapons and vehicles for the military. You didn't grow up in a world that when that war was over, these factories started making consumer products. You didn't grow up in a world where bread was five cents, gas was 10 cents, and people did business on a handshake. You probably didn't grow up in a world where people got dressed up to go to the movies or the mall. No, you were born on the tail end of that era. Maybe in your childhood, you remember something called a payphone, or you used to play outside instead of on a device. Or maybe those are your parents' stories. But both you and baby boomers, the same baby boomers who believe you lack respect and values and maturity, now live in a world together where adaptation is the name of the game. You can graduate with a master's degree and still not find a job, but you can also watch TV on your phone. You can start a business and in five to seven years be a millionaire, but you can also apply for and live off of unemployment. You can borrow money to buy groceries, 
or a college education. But you can also borrow money to buy a house and rent it out to tenants. You can learn a new skill on the internet, but you can also spend your life on social media. The point is, change has always happened and people have always adapted. It just happens faster now than it used to. If you notice, some people aren't ready for it or don't want it at all because change means normal goes away and is replaced with something else. We don't want to adapt. And quite frankly, if you don't want to adapt, then you don't want to grow. The tragedy behind the triumph is this. Some things change and some things don't. Like the fact that in 2020, we are still killing each other instead of listening to each other. Or the fact that we can come together on breast cancer awareness and veterans affairs, but God forbid you vote for the other candidate. We can come together on sports, but God forbid our athletes speak their minds. So between baby boomers and millennials, your normal was different, but you also have similarities. One such similarity is unemployment. Unemployment is a normal that millennials and baby boomers had in common long before COVID-19. If you're a millennial, you might have a degree with no job. If you're a baby boomer, you might have tenure with no job. Baby boomers have behaved, they behaved a certain way back when you could trust corporations and the government to take care of you. That world worked so well and many believed in it so much that they passed these behaviors down to their children and their grandchildren. But when that world went away and graduates couldn't get hired and loyal employees were laid off, too few people had prepared for or adapted to the change. And millions of people were then robbed of their normal. But is normal really a good thing? Is normal what was or is best for you? I once met a woman in her 50s. She quit corporate America to start a photography business. I'm going to say that again. She quit corporate America under her own volition to start a photography business. It, it was one of the craziest things since Colonel Sanders started KFC. But guess what? Not two years later, she retired on a farm in Oklahoma and has lived the life of her dreams ever since. The nerve of this woman, how dare she break tradition, leaving all that job security in a world leaving people like her behind. But instead of waiting to be left behind, she adapted because you don't stop learning when you graduate. So is normal really a good thing? Is normal what was or is best for you? I know a millennial couple. The wife was once a nurse and her husband worked full time in another profession. They started investing in real estate in their 20s and became landlords before their 30s. I'm gonna say that again. <laughs> A millennial couple started investing in real estate in their 20s and became landlords before their 30s. Just like the 50-something woman who retired as a photographer, this couple changed their normal before it abandoned them. But you may feel like it's too late. But the fact is, it's not too late. 
even though it may really, really feel like it and seem like it. You may feel like the world has left you behind. You may feel like your normal was robbed from you and ripped away. You may be battling fear and ultimately the lack of hope. And maybe you're waiting on something. But the fact is, the undisputable fact is, there is always someone worse off than you. And there is always someone better off than you. The decision you have to make is, who are you competing with? Them or yourself? Picture this, stay with me here. What if a millennial started a small business and employed a baby boomer? What if a baby boomer with a mom and pop business employed a millennial? In that case, the only thing that divides these generations is opportunity. When I say, are we divided or dividing each other? What I mean is, here's what I mean by it. Tim has white skin. I have brown skin. Technically that divides us. So how would we divide each other though? Well, we would divide each other if I judged him by the color of his skin rather than the content of his character and vice versa. I could have said, I'm not going on some white man's summit because let's be real, that's how a lot of people think and how a lot of others talk. You know what's ironic about racism? It's that it doesn't care what color you are. Neither does unemployment. Neither does COVID-19 or political partisanship or what year you were born. It does not matter that you were born first, you were born next, or you were born after that. It does not matter what color you are. It does not matter who you vote for. What matters is that millions have lost their jobs in 2020. And if you own a business, want to start one, or need to go work for one, then there is still opportunity for you to change your normal. But you have to take the jump. I promise you, you will fly if you stay focused. I promise you, you will fly if you believe you can. You will fly if you change your mindset. You will fly if you change your language. You will fly if you change your actions. Yes, your normal was taken from you, but I have good news. You can either get it back or create a new one. You may feel divided, so stop being divisive and focus on what we have in common. For example, small businesses need help and people need jobs. What about the small businesses that didn't get the government funding, the millions of them? They lack money, which means it's hard to keep their doors open. But you know what also keeps their doors open? Customers. What if you are an extrovert and you're an outgoing person and you have a knack for talking to people? What if you went and talked to the business owners or the business managers and said, hey, I can bring some customers in the door for you. What do you say you give me a cut of some of the sales? Or hey, let's talk about me coming on board and joining your team and you know, let's figure this out together. What if you're a solopreneur? You do everything by yourself. Your business is you and you are your business and your business runs you, but you like it that way. What if you decided you were a bit overwhelmed because you have the same 24 hours in a day as the rest of us? And you decided maybe you could use a hand. Maybe I should bring on somebody to help me out here. That somebody could be one of the millions of people waiting to put food on the table. That somebody can take something extra off of your plate so they can put food on theirs. 
let that kind of stuff marinate. This is what I mean by opportunities and how we can stop dividing each other and figuring out what we have in common beyond the blood that runs through our veins. The fact that we all have to sleep, we all have to eat, we all have to drink. We are all doing the same thing, which is we're trying to dig a well. We're trying to dig our own well. Your well could be finding your hope. Your well could be finding a job. Your well could be losing a bad relationship. Your well could be creating a new one. Your well could be finding something to hold on to, something to believe in, something to take hold of outside of what social media and some of the news tells you to take hold of. Your well could be getting in touch with the universe and declaring affirmations. Your well could be starting a relationship with Jesus. And the cool thing about digging a well is that all you need is the right shovel. And that's, that's mainly what I have for you today. Okay, that's... Uh, <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, man. Wow. Thank you so much. That was, that was fantastic. Um, yeah, I love, I love both the call, you know, the call to action of, you know, it's time you got to go out there and do it. You got to go create your normal. We, we started off uh, our first sort of talk of the day was um, basically forget the new normal how to create a more frequent extraordinary so i love i love how like some of that is is continuing to tie up we've definitely had 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 a great a great theme throughout the day of um you know stay you know watching what you you know believing the media uh or watching what you take from media really coming home to being human and connecting with other people and i i, I the way you talked about how we all have the same problems like i think it is really or the same challenges it just it just really hit home um so so i want to first appreciate that and yeah i mean i guess from from your perspective um i know you mentioned being willing to hire someone but what, what is something that you know that a business can do or or even anyone really can do to ensure that they're taking um that they're not being divisive Right. So I, I think that um, I think it has it starts with a mutual understanding of uh, of what you need versus what uh, uh, versus what somebody else needs. So, for example, let's say that, you know, you could use a salesperson because your business, your mom and pop store is struggling right now right. Uh, because you were looking for that. You were looking for that stimulus, but it didn't happen. So how else are you going to get, you know, how else are you going to get cash into the business? Well, you could try to get a loan. We know what that was like. <laughs> or you can do it the old fashioned way and get customers. What does that look like? Right. Well, there are restaurants that changed their normal and started doing curbside pickup. And there are pharmacies where you would park in front of the pharmacy and somebody would come out to your car and then do what you needed to do. And a lot, a lot of businesses switch to online ordering. Are you able to do something like that? And maybe at the same time, do you need a hand with something like that? Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody that was displaced from their job is in a situation where they're having to start over. Their normal was robbed from them. So what if they did something like this? What if they decided, I'm going to reinvent myself. I'm going to recreate a normal. And what that looks like for me is I'm going to go develop a new skill set. I'm going to learn how to do this thing. I'm going to learn how to edit videos, or I'm going to learn how to sell stuff, or I'm going to learn how to build websites, or I'm going to learn how to, um, I'm going to learn how to push, uh, push equipment around or whatever it is. There's a need for all of these small businesses that are struggling, these small businesses we rely on small businesses at the foundation of our economy and 
there are a few schools of thought that I think we that we miss in this arena. You can start a business. It's a scary, crazy time to start a business right now, but man, what an opportunity. But there are also existing businesses. There are owners of businesses who are their businesses. They're one person armies. They like it that way. It's been that way for a while, but now things have changed for them too. Maybe it's time that you looked at, if you are this person, maybe it's time that you looked at, why don't I bring somebody onto the team? Why don't I take something off of my plate? Because what does this mean? This means it's one less thing that you have to do, which means you get that time back while somebody else can enrich themselves with an activity, something to move their mind into a new arena, something new to challenge them, but also that puts food on the table. You know what I mean? So being in touch with the needs of somebody else and how it aligns with your needs can, um, it, it's a win-win situation for both sides, if, if that answers your question. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Um, yeah, and I guess um, when when it comes to working on a team and like right now we have, you know, we're in a situation where, you know, a lot of even political stuff is bleeding into what's happening at work, you know? <laughs> and it's yeah. like, and it's like, how do you manage um, expectations and, um, you know, concepts within your employees uh, or within your team while still trying to, um, to hold up your own values at the same time? Right. Yeah. It's, um, it's fascinating because obviously, um, certain uh, <laughs> certain topics trigger certain emotions and certain levels of emotions. For some people, when you mention a certain phrase or a word or a person, then you can go to a 10 immediately. And now you go from having a discussion to a debate to a fight. Right. And of course, we know what that can do to, to a workplace environment. Uh, the best example that I can give is an example that I have that's a personal one for me. When my wife and I met, and you, and you know, Amy, of course, we go back years, but when my wife and I met, we were polar opposites politically. I come from a, a very liberal family, um, and my mother was a black sheep because she was conservative, and she passed that to me. And with my wife Amy's family, they were predominantly conservative, and she was liberal. Um, and so she, it was, it was that strange dichotomy of two worlds colliding, you know, <laughs> and, uh, what we, so of course we had our discussions, debates. Um, but in that we, we had to understand that when we got to the point where it started escalating and we felt like a fight was coming on, we had to step back and say, wait a second, we need to, if this is going to work, we need to find some type of common ground. I can't agree with you, you can't agree with me, but maybe there's a common ground. Same thing with the baby boomers versus millennials. Baby boomers come from a normal that no longer exists, while many millennials are looking for a normal that may not yet exist. So where's our common ground? Where can we see eye to eye with each other and go from there? I think there's a, um, I think there's a different type of pandemic in society where we, we have it in our heads that understanding and agreement are one and the same. Like, mm. if I understand where you're coming from, then I agree with you and I'm on your side and things like this. And I think that's, that's something that those are two things that we need to disassociate. Mm. I can understand you without agreeing with you. So if we go back to the office environment and let's say team members may be bickering or things have escalated, the reason that we have that break is because we're not listening to the other side. I don't have to agree with your views on this, but I can understand where you're coming from. I don't have to agree with your support of this candidate, or in some cases, your worshiping of this candidate, <laughs> but I can understand where it's coming. Yeah. You know? And throughout, obviously throughout political history, j just speaking in politics, throughout different terms and, and, uh, and eras in history, there are, supporters of certain candidates that have nearly worshiped the candidate and it's and people on the other side are like what are you doing but then the switch flips when the next the opposite the opposing party gets an office and it's like 
we, we're doing the same thing. So that's another thing that we have in common <laughs> is, is, is that type of passion. And when we start seeing and understanding that, I think that's what can start build, start uh, help us build the bridge, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, yeah, I really uh, appreciate you coming on and talking here today. It's been great being able to connect with you uh, on this pla on this platform and in this way again. And um, so, yeah, tell them, just let everybody know a little bit about where they can find out more about uh, procedures. Uh, procedure sheets and <laughs> and the uh, and, and the other things that you have going on. Uh, well, first, uh, if if you'd like to connect with me, I'd love to connect with you on Facebook or LinkedIn. That's where I am. You can search for Brandon Turner Procedure Sheets or Brandon Turner Oklahoma because that's where I live um, on Facebook or LinkedIn. And to uh, to learn more about Procedure Sheets, the easiest way is to visit our website at Get sops.com that's g-e-t-s-o-p-s.com there's a little video where i share my story and how we got started and then we talk about how we help people create jobs for other people and scale their businesses and get their time back awesome man cool well, thank you and uh yeah we'll we'll definitely have to chat again soon yeah absolutely thank you tim and thank you for what you're doing guys appreciate yeah. you awesome thank you Thank you.